Dobrý den. A já se jmenuji Artur Sichov, tady najdu jenom kameru a tady je. A tak dneska budu live ze Somnium Space, já jsem teda zakladatel a CEO Somnium Space a jelikož streamujeme různě uh, i na všechny sociální sítě, tak můj talk udělám v angličtině, ale pokud budete chtít samozřejmě, tak potom se můžete ptát v češtině, až uh, dokončím nějaký ten tour, který udělám. All right, are we ready with the sound? Uh, I'll try to send the sound one second. I'll try to send some... Uh, Now should be hearing the sound. Yeah, okay, cool. So we are hearing the fireworks. They're right there. That's good. Um, all right, so my name is Artur Sitchov. I'm the founder and CEO of Somnium Space. And right now I'm live in VR. And you know, um, we today will discuss many things. I'll show you around. We have quite a lot of time, um, and I'll show you some very interesting things. What uh, Somnium is working on, and also what our users are working on, and what they're building inside our world. So first of all, what is Somnium Space? Somnium Space is a virtual reality platform, which allows people to build and monetize their content and create whatever they want. We are compatible with all VR headsets on the market. The interesting part about Somnium Space is that our economy, our economy is running on the blockchain. And I'll explain you later why we believe this is very important. So and many people talk about many people talk about metaverse. Um, and you hear metaverse there, metaverse here, everybody's an expert in the metaverse. But what is actually a metaverse? Um, we have our understanding in Somnium what we believe the metaverse is. And we believe that in order for something to be a metaverse, it needs to, it needs to have three main pillars. So number one, it has to be immersive. So what does it mean? We think it means that it has to be at least in virtual reality, maybe in the future in augmented reality. But why is it important that the metaverse is in VR? Because where, when you're in VR, your brain believes that you are there. Right now, I'm not there with you guys, I'm sorry, but I'm actually here and I'm seeing all those, you know, all those buildings and all those creations and the sun um, and I see it as if I would see it in real life. And this is very important if you want to create a feeling about, um, about where you are and create a connection with your environment and also with other people. So that's number one, it has to be immersive. Number two, it has to be decentralized. And that's where we come to the blockchain. Why do we believe that the metaverse needs to be decentralized? It's because you cannot have a big metaverse, which will exist here for maybe 100, 100 plus years, with the centralized economy. We want users and our you know, gamers and creators to really own things they create. Now, if you go to Fortnite, if you go to any other game today, you own nothing you own absolutely nothing. You own a database entry in their servers, in their servers, not your servers, that says that you have this character, maybe you have some virtual money, maybe you bought something, but you control nothing. And what we said is, that's not a right approach. I, myself as a gamer, I don't believe this is the right approach. I want to own things, I want to control things. I want to be the one, as the user, who decides hey, do I want to buy and sell things here or do I want to go somewhere else? Do I want to create more or do I want to create less? That's why decentralization is important. So everything you see here, so if I will turn around and I show you all those buildings around in the distance, and there are thousands of buildings like this, this is all created by users and these are all NFT tokens. In fact, this avatar is the blockchain token and I own it in my wallet. And Nobody can take it from me, not even Somnium Space. So that is the power of decentralization. That's the power of economy. And only by doing so, you have two things. You have decentralized economy and you have interoperability. So, okay, we said it has to be immersive, but also we said it has to be decentralized. What else it needs to be? I think one of the most important things is it has to be persistent. Now, what is the persistence? It's kind of a difficult to explain, but let's say if you would be in New Zealand right now and I'm here in Prague, you would stay next to me in VR here on this roof and we would look in the sunset and I would say, hey, look at this. Let me, let me zoom in here uh, in real time. And I would say, hey, hey look at this. Uh, look at this cloud covering the sun, right? And you would say, yeah, that's beautiful. 
because we would have connected reality. We would have the same reality together and we would see the same thing. That's called persistence. We are experiencing the same virtual thing as everybody else. So that's very important. So again, let's repeat. It has to be immersive, so VR and maybe AR. It has to be decentralized because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be dependent on any centralized company like, I don't know, Facebook or Unreal or whatever. And it has to be persistent. So we all experience the same, uh, the same realm at the same time. Now, what am I wearing right now? I'm in VR headset. This is the VR headset Valve Index, which you can you know, purchase for $700. Um, I am in a Tesla suit, which you cannot purchase for $700. This is actually 10,000 euros. But what Tesla suit allows me to do is it allows me to feel the environment. It is the full body haptic suit, but not vibrations. Like, it's not a simple vibration. It's electrical diodes. They're all over the place. And what they do is they mimic the real sensation. So they apply electrical current on my body so that I can feel the wind, the rain, the touch of other player. I can feel the pressure. I can feel the music. I can feel anything I want when, I, when I'm flying or teleporting. So this is as close to Ready Player One as it can get. Um, and by mimicking my visual, my audio, plus my you know, full body haptic, I truly, you know, my brain believes that I'm inside this world. And this is very important for communication, for your you know, future interactions and other things. So today, uh, what I will do is I'll try to go inside some of the user creations. Um, let me repeat that some new space as user, you know, most of the time, 98% of content you see around me is user generated content. It's users building using our tools they build inside our platform. And then they sell it, they use it, they monetize it, they do whatever they want with it. That's the key. We don't care what they do with it. It's up to them, and they control it. So right behind me here um, are portals to some of the user-generated worlds. So not only they can build on a land parcel uh, like this, these buildings, but they can also create their own worlds, complete worlds. And they can do any technique there. They can use you know, any. Um, you know, they can utilize the Unity scripting, like the ball, to script any kind of game, any kind of interaction, anything they like. Um, they can monetize the, uh, their, their parcels. So what I'll do is um, I will probably go to a car racing, and I'll show some cool NFTs. And then we'll drive together to another world, and we'll dive into the world, and then we'll tell you more. So what I'll do right now, I'll switch off the, uh, the tablet. So now you see my first person. By the way, this is the tablet I'm using to talk to you. This is the selfie camera. Everybody knows how to use that. And I can go, for example, here to avatars. And there are some basic avatars we have. But if you click to blockchain, what our system is doing, it scans your wallet, your crypto wallet. In my case, it's MetaMask. It scans my MetaMask, and it says, oh, you own these NFT avatars. Here is my avatar, which I'm wearing right now. This is the beauty. Um, I can switch to any other avatar. I can become this uh, great lion. OK, we're on a hotspot right now. Everything, by the way, I'm running right now Somnium through my friend's uh, mobile phone because the signal here was not so good. So we're running through the hotspot. You can do this through the hotspot. It doesn't need to have five gigabits internet. You can do it through mobile phone, no problem. So here is my second NFT avatar. Um, so I can, I can turn around like this. This is, this is my second favorite one, I would say. And if I want to use it, if I want to wear it, uh, this line, I can just click Use Avatar. And suddenly, if I look at myself, I'm the line. Congratulations to me. So now I forgot what I wanted to do. I wanted to go here through Somnium Teleportation Hub. By the way, these teleportation hubs are also NFTs. And I can go here. And let's hope everything will work fine. And I can go to the racetrack. And why I'm going there, OK, we're on the racetrack. Let me use some gut power to press a magic button. And we'll do sunset just for a better, better use. Uh, you see those fireworks in the distance? That's where we were right now. We came through teleportation hub here. And this is the racetrack where we have races. All those cars, all those bikes, and everything else you see, these are NFTs. These are owned by people. And only the people who, can, who own those NFTs can drive them. So let me go to. Uh, to this one. Let me take. All right. Let me turn around here. Oh, I like the base. It's amazing. 
Okay, this is NFT. I'm I'm flying with my I'm flying with my uh, with my NFT avatar on my NFT scooter. Okay, maybe the sound uh, could put it a little bit down. So you see the parcels are loading at the same time. So if I if I stop here, of course, depending on the internet speed, they will load um, they will load faster or slower. But here, for example, is a great parcel, uh, which is built by um, a company from US. They own several stadiums in Somnium, and they and they do a lot of a lot of business in Somnium. And they build this beautiful racetrack viewing facility for people to come in and relax on the on the top uh, on the top part when they're watching the race. Uh, but let's fly to another world. Let's see here. We're loading those parcels procedurally, and we're going to the city center. And again, it's all decentralized, so users can build whatever they want. And you can see how different it is. I mean, um, anyone builds, honestly, anything from VR gallery to we have a legal company who makes uh, legal appointments in VR, and they uh, meet their clients in VR every day and uh, just do the business meetings there. But we're going to the city center right now. Um, above the water there is a there, there is some uh, layer here it's a floating island now we're going back to the city center where we left off I just wanted to show you this um, uh, this hovercraft and we're going to a an interesting world everybody speaks about AI for example and everybody speaks like yes AI will revolutionize things and it will but today I will show you how exactly it will be happening and I will show you that there is there are some real use cases about the AI too. So now we came to this parcel. We can exit. OK. Let me teleport. Teleport here. Whoop. OK. I think I'll have to restart. Bye bye. OK. I'm here. I'm back. Very good. So we're going to this world, which is created by this guy. And he's our one of the most active, if not the most active builder in Somnium space. He builds worlds, he rents them to companies, to individuals. He runs full-time business on, based on Somnium, which, you know, the, uh, on, the, on the platform he built on top of Somnium. So let's go to the, so we're now going inside the NFT token. So we're actually going diving into the NFT. Now we are downloading and now we'll enter the world. So what will happen right now is, I'll load through the world. It will take me probably some 10 seconds. Uh, while I'm seeing the animation, you will see this. This is the preview of the world. And there I'll show you the real use case of the AI and how AI could interact with VR in real time. OK. Oh, we're still unpacking. OK, now we're diving in. It's all happening on the hotspot, I, I remind you, OK? We are using the hotspot of the mobile phone to be inside VR right now. It's all live. Nothing is pre-recorded, pre-prepared. You see all the movements I do are immediately uh, put into VR. Um, and OK, we're loading. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. When you do live things, some things might go wrong. Oh, we're here. And if some things might go wrong, they always do go wrong. So that's a rule of life. So again, you see that uh, if I put here the live stream back, um, you see that all the movements I'm doing in real time are, what? The internet is connected. It's not, OK, so we need to go out and go back. OK, let's exit the world. But let's check if our internet connection is still there. Your hotspot sucks. Oh, man. Come on. OK, let's see. It's Apple. OK. We blame Apple. No problem. Not my fault. I like, exactly. <laughs> this guy. It's this guy's fault. OK, I'm just saying. No, we're back. Um, let's, uh, let's load back. So we, are, we, are base, we call this base reality. So that's where everybody starts. This is the base world where everybody shares. And then there are user-generated worlds, uh, which user create, and you can go through the portals. Again, let's download now. Decoding. I like decoding. Extracting. OK, we can enter the world. And we'll try again, because 
so there's something really cool I want to show you. And um, Yaroslav will take, tell you a few, few words about what he did. He integrated AI with ChatGPT you know, um, and VR avatars to make this um, amazing experience. Um, so I'm, now I'm seeing a beautiful animation here. You don't see anything. Sorry for you. Uh, but I'm fully immersed. OK, second try. Is it happening? OK, yes. OK, you see, one, one interesting thing. We are inside his NFT. So he owns this NFT, and he built it inside this NFT. We're inside the world. And what he's doing, he said, hey, Arthur, I like you. I like Somnium Space, OK? But I don't, you know, don't want to trust you too much. I will stream all the content in this world from my servers, not from your servers. So he has the ability to build everything inside Somnium and keep it on Somnium servers. But he said, no, 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 no. I will do it on my server. So what you're seeing right now is we're loading content, which is in real time loaded, from his servers into his NFT world, which is inside Somnium. OK, do I hear some minds blown? Uh, I don't know. I don't see you, so I will believe that yes. Um, so that's what's happening in the same time. So he's loading all the content. We see that things are appearing in front of our eyes. Actually, your uh, health spot is not that bad. It's uh, improving uh, quite rapidly. But we need to wait, and then we will showcase you um, some things here in real time. So 65, 67. OK, what he has here? He has a map of Somnium. And on this map, he created this holographic map where he shows where are his parcels and his world. So for those who want to visit different parcels of uh, Yaroslav, they can go, and uh, they now know, OK, uh, we are here. We are we're here. This is the parcel we're right now. Uh, but he has a lot of parcels. Man, you're a magnate. Um, OK, so we can go here. We can fly here. These are the NFTs of you seen in the main world. This was the showroom they greet with the creators of those uh, cars and bikes. I own this one, the, the beautiful one. I love it. Um, but let's go here. And we will showcase you live AI. And I hope it will work. So let me grant the consent and let me do let me do the following. Let me try to see if the audio will work. Okay. Look, can you put the audio a little bit up? Uh, the sound the sound people are they there? Nobody there? I can do it myself. No problem. We'll hack your system from here. Okay. So we have AI here. Hello, where you are? Okay, here you are. We have AI here. Oh, don't go away. Um, and what I can do is I can talk to it in real time. So let me try. Hello, how, hello, how are you doing? OK, let me do one more thing before I go there. Let me switch the microphone to my HMD. Perfect. Tablet, go away. OK, here we are. OK, hi, how are you doing? Hello, Artur. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing amazingly well. I'm right now presenting at the conference. Wow, that's amazing. What is the topic of your presentation? It's actually virtual reality and the metaverse. That sounds fantastic. What do you think of the potential of virtual reality in the metaverse? What benefits do you think they provide? Listen, I think it's awesome. I am so glad to hear that. What do you think makes it so awesome? Are there any unique advantages of the metaverse that you particularly enjoy? Let me ask you one question. What do you think about the metaverse? That's a tricky one, because I don't know what she'll answer. We, we have no idea. This, this is you know live conversation here. I think the metaverse is an incredibly exciting virtual world with a lot of potential for both individual and broader societal experiences. Large, persistent, and shared okay. virtual spaces. That's too long. Bye bye. OK, so that's one example. This is all live happening. And I can talk to assistant. I can talk to these guys as well. I can try if I click on them. OK. Hey, how, hey, how are you doing today? You look fantastic. Hi, 
Hi there. Thank you. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, I look fantastic too. <laughs> ha ha. It sounds like you're having a great oh, time. Oh, you see? She even understands jokes. Oh, you're very smart. OK, so that's AI. And for, to explain what Yarda did here inside Somnium Space, so he utilized our SDK to build this. But I give you a word to explain a little bit of uh, what you did here uh, and why you created it. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. So I'm creator of this world. Uh, and actually, one cool thing about this world is that uh, I'm not hosting only mine content. Uh, when you looked up, there were like different portals into other different worlds. And some of them are actually uh, created and managed by other people, my clients, my partners. And they can even, I, I don't even know what's there. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously, I, I go there. But if they, like one hour ago, they decided to change something, there could be something completely different. And uh, they're using uh, my system uh, to manage all of that. And uh, it actually doesn't go through Somnium at all. It's, it's completely uh, <laughs> self-hosted and uh, self-managed <laughs> uh, system. Uh, and uh, regarding the, the NPCs, so basically the idea is that uh, Somnium is very open uh, in the way or in what they allow. And we can do, I would say, like 98, 99% of what's possible to do in Unity. And almost anything that you can imagine uh, these days is possible to do in Unity. You can imagine any game, any application uh, that's currently available. Uh, and you will be able to do it inside Somnium. And one of those is obviously AI, because uh, we believe that AI is going to be huge uh, for the metaverse and for VR in general. Uh, so we implemented these prototypes. And uh, yeah, uh, all, we've, basically we are connecting to OpenAI, uh, to Google uh, speech uh, services, uh, and uh, we integrated all uh, in our system, and we are loading it into Somnium, uh, where uh, in Somnium we are getting the uh, basically the base platform. We have all the features that Somnium provided, uh, so the tablet, everything that Somnium, uh, that uh, Artu showed, and much more. So it allows us to just start with the cool features, and uh, like it speeds up the development uh, so much. So yeah, that's that's really huge. And uh, another cool factor is that Arthur mentioned persistence. Uh, so we believe that like, if there's AI in the metaverse and you're talking to the AI, uh, well, other people should see and should hear uh, the conversation if they are uh, part of the conversation. So actually, those NPCs that are down there, and uh, that you, you saw the little number there, so the number indicates the state. We uh, try to keep it like very uh, non-intrusive for people, but it's there. And you can see if someone else is uh, talking to the NPC. So you could see the, the green one when Arthur was talking, and two and three. That's because he was in control, but if there would be I would be there, and I would be watching the conversation. I would see like little log, and I would know, OK, I can't talk to this NPC. Someone else is talking to the NPC. And I would see the conversation, and I would hear the conversation. So we actually, when we did the launch, uh, we had quite a lot of fun with, uh, with those NPCs because they all have different backstories, and different people talk to them. And they have memory that's actually persistent as, that as well. It's shared. So one person talked to them, and then other person uh, talked to them. And they know what uh, that first person said, and they can continue the story. And uh, yeah, so I actually, uh, because Art was talking to one of the NPCs Let's a lot, I, I asked uh, yeah, uh, what, uh, what the NPC thinks about Arthur. And she gave oh, us come on. OK, I won't show <laughs> this right now live. OK, I don't want to ask these kind of questions. Uh, but I want to show the next world. Is the correct one, right? Yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's so we were yesterday, we were having an event in Somnium, and we were discussing AI and everything in VR. And then Yarda showed us something he created in his world. And I want to show it to you because it blew my mind. Uh, uh, and it blew everybody's mind. And you can explain how you did it. Um, so let's go into this world here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I actually changed it a little bit. <laughs> okay, wait, uh, wait, wait. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna put, uh, I wanna put like this. Does it look good? Let's let's put the uh, the field of view. Let me check. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Oh my god. Okay, tell us what is this? What are we yes. looking at? So so what you can see is like we are basically inside mathematical function. 
That's probably the, the best way to describe that. Uh, it's not one function. It's actually a lot of them that are merged together uh, in a quite complicated way. And it's cal calculated in real time. Uh, and the, yeah, it's basically put it on like this big sphere that but we are watching. Tell right. them how you created it. Who helped yeah. you to create this? Yeah, and uh, actually the, the person that uh, created big part of this work was uh, the AI. So I, I had the basis, uh, I know where I want to get, but I don't have so much experience building these uh, shaders, as they are called, these algorithms. So I ask AI, and step by step, we build it together. So, so that's, that's quite cool. And it gives a lot of hope for people that maybe are not so technical, but have big dreams, maybe not, uh, not so much money. Uh, you can use AI, it's free. <laughs> uh, and you can do awesome things like that. And one cool thing about that, is that if Arthur goes closer to the wall, it's like big, uh, but you can like teleport three times and you will be there. Uh, I'm coming. Okay. So you can see, like the, the problem with VR a lot is that if, even if you have like high resolution texture, then when you get really close to something, then you will start to see the pixels. Uh, it's not so big problem if you have third person view uh, in a game, but if in VR you can get like really close to the thing uh, and then you, you it breaks the immersion, you, you, you start seeing the pixels. But in here, it's, all way, it's like infinite resolution, basically. Yeah. It uh, takes the resolution of your headset that you're rendering to, and it, for each pixel, it calculates the output of the function. And so you I want to add one thing, especially here, it's very well uh, seen. So when, when you're in VR, immersion is very important, right? Because um, because you want to be you want to be immersed you want your brain to believe that the, you are there that's the holy grail of immersion and if we look at my avatar right now let me zoom in if you if you look at my avatar so when your brain looks at something it automatically analyzes it even you not understanding it it automatically analyzes the situation and tells you whether something is real or not so in this case if you look at my avatar if you see how i'm moving my head and the light is real time lighting is reflecting from my avatar showing me that you know something is happening there is some light here that's where the brain tells okay it should happen the same way in real life that's why that's why i i believe this is real so all those small things even if you don't realize that it's happening but they're happening and you know you see how it all reflects from uh, from the arms and stuff this is very important these are the clues vr gives to your brain to make sure that your brain believes that you are here um, I just wanted to explain it because that's, that's, that's super crucial for immersion. Okay, I'm not sure how much time we have. I can talk about it forever, so make yourself comfortable. But I can go to the main lobby. I can return there. Let me bring my camera. Uh, shall, I, shall I show them Jukebox? I can show the Jukebox, because uh, why not? So here is a, here's a Jukebox, and uh, let's uh, play some, some songs. I'm not sure if it's even working here. I think I actually put it offline. Uh, yes. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, the maintenance. No problem. Yeah, we're getting new songs there. J J okay, okay. If you have J some time, you can, you can show them the game. Uh, oh, I can show you exactly which one is this. Magic Cave? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Yarda has created a game, um, which is, like, I would say a very nice and visually appealing competitive game. And I'm not good at it. I'm very bad at it. Uh, but I'll show you anyways how, ma how many percentage we have. Okay, 73. Yeah, We're small. almost there. We're almost there. We're getting there. Um, and we'll show you like what, what is possible to create inside, um, in, inside Somnium. So let's go to the magic cave. Okay. Welcome, aspiring wizard, to the realm of the dreaming. Oh, my God. Created by the Magic Academy, this ethereal realm is your training ground, your forge. Embrace this journey of magic and mastery. Let the lessons begin. Exciting times await as you are on the cusp of okay, casting your very... I tutorial, because I believe I'm good. And now I'll put, the, uh, I'll put the things here. And now I will need to start the song, right? Here, the, I need to play. Okay. I just put 90s pop. Okay, I stand here. And now I can be a magician. How do I do it? What do I press, Yarda? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the top button and trigger. You hold uh, the B okay. and trigger. Yeah. Oh! You got it. Okay, do you see it on the screen, what I'm, what I'm doing there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. So, let's try to... 
Okay. You see, I told you I'm bad at it, <laughs> but I'm trying. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Ah. <laughs> hey, don't laugh. Come on. You yeah. created it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. That's, that's why I laugh. <laughs> I'm allowed to. I'm almost there. Ah, okay. Nice. Come on. Can I get, had, get some cheer up? Come on. Whoa. Come on, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. All right. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> enough embarrassment. Let's, yeah, let's just leave and okay, we'll, quit. Yeah, we'll finish. And All right. It, like the cool thing about this is that um, it has haptic fe feedback on the controllers. So uh, when you charge the spell, and then when you throw it, uh, uh, there's haptic feedback. And also we are going to add uh, feedback uh, uh, with the Tesla suit. So that's, that's actually, like, I'm pretty sure, only game that will have uh, this feature. Or Correct. Just, uh, state of the art tech. So you feel the impacts, you feel everything. And by the way, when, when you have the Tesla suit on, because it has all this electrical, uh, electrical um, points here, whenever I take this arm and I charge the charge, you see, I'm charging the charge. You know, you can feel the electri electricity going like this. So you kind of feel the power in the hand. And when you release, it just releases as well. So it's just hard to explain, but it's quite magical. And this is the power of VR. That's the future of VR. That's how people will train. Tesla suits are used to train military, police, doctors, you know, firefighters. And also it will be used for laser for VR for, you know, all kinds of experiences, uh, which normally people will not be able to get in real life. Um, I guess, I guess we will open floor for questions. If anyone has any question, můžeme česky, jestli chcete. Tak zvedněte ruku a asi vám přinesu mikrofon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the question was, I just repeated for the, the sound, the question was, is there, are there any limitations in terms of self-expression or technically? Technically, I would say there is none. It's only about your ability to go around some you know, programming tasks and things like that. So technically, you're almost unlimited in what you can do. In terms of self-expression, self we are a decentralized platform. Obviously, what is not allowed is like, I don't know, uh, some obvious things like killing people on videos and putting it in, in VR. But if we put apart just normal things like that or bad things like that, um, anything else is possible because you own your stuff, you are in your world. You can even gate the world. You can say, no one except my friends has access to this world. So we wouldn't have the access to this world and only you will have. So we even not know what is there. So yeah, that's what we build. It's a decentralized system. Yes, I love you. <laughs> we encourage, actually, on our metrics, obviously, we were selling the land and we're selling the world. So the world you saw, what, is, what happened here? OK, here. Uh, so you saw th the world we're in right now, it's an NFT token. So Yarda bought it a long time ago, right? Um, I would say 90 plus percent of people who bought things in Somnium, because we're a quite advanced platform, um, they built on this platform. Maximum what is happening is we have some people who bought land, and then they rent it out. They just rent it out for 10 percent of the price per year. That's roughly the, the price. So. We work with our community. We have creators fund. We created a creators fund, and we fund projects for, from creators. It's like a real-time uh, Shark Tank meets, uh, you know, a, a show where you come and you pitch your idea in VR, and we give you funding. We already gave more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars of funding towards creators in Somnium. So we encourage our community to build on the land. We encourage our people to create and create events. And I don't think we have this problem of sitting on the land and doing nothing. Some parcels, yes, but not majority. And then maybe like with the with the UK's use case for gaming. So you saw the game that is, is not a, not yet finished, but it's getting close. And if if I would uh, go through the regular development process, 
uh, I would be developing something standalone, then I would need to get testers, uh, get it to them, uh, you know, uh, uh, test it out, and then eventually publish it on, on some platform, pay like quite a lot of uh, money uh, on each sale and going through all of that, and uh, maybe they will not like what I'm doing. They decide, okay, we don't like blockchain things, so they ban me from uh, Steam and uh, cut me from my community and so on. Uh, here, basically, like, I'm developing the game, I'm building the world, uh, the community from Somnium comes there because it's something interesting, there's always something new, we do events and stuff, and there are other people that are building there as well. So they're coming there, and uh, they are playing uh, different games, and uh, they help me test those mechanics, and those are the enthusiasts that I want as testers, as early testers. I don't need to find them, I don't need to pay them, uh, it's just a mutually beneficial uh, sort of agreement. And uh, then when I publish it, I just publish it here. Uh, uh, people can come here. Everything is already uh, ready. Uh, they can come there with their own avatars and uh, skins and everything. So all of this uh, is ready. And I can just publish it by saying, OK, it's published. Uh, and I can put maybe some, if I want to have it gated, I can put some paywall there, or I can have uh, maybe sell avatars, or whatever I, I decide to use for monetization or have it for free. Uh, and have maybe some sponsors. I, I don't know, but it's it's much easier to do it uh, than through traditional platforms. So if, you know the, the use cases are, are so many. Uh, I think it's just uh, getting and and we have big clients that are coming in and they are uh, telling us, okay, like we want to build something uh, like that. Can you can you help us? So it's just uh, we are going through the steps and through the adoption. All right. Anyone else has any questions? What ask you? Commentator. I think we did a good job. All right, yeah, please. So the question is do, do I think if DAOs play a role in decentralization? I think in the future they might. Today, in 2023, there is no real DAOs out there. Like, there's almost no real DAOs which can really be called a DAO in a perfect sense of how it's planned, right? Because most of the time you end up in a DAO where there is a bunch of few people or a like, few people holding the most of the tokens and they just execute the power of those tokens. And it doesn't matter if, it's, if I execute the power through the shareholding power or through the DAO. If three people hold 98% of the tokens, it's the same thing. So I have not yet seen through my quite extensive, let's say, engagement in blockchain industry, I have not yet seen the real DAO where I would say, OK, that's something where it works perfectly. I've seen some DAOs which kind of work OK, uh, but they still need to go through some centralized processes. And then I saw some decentralized DAOs where it's complete, uh, complete disaster. So I think we'll yet to wait. Uh, I think something like this will exist. But today, it's too early for real DAOs, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would say that thanks to the openness, it actually does a lot of uh, distributing the power out to the community or out to the people that are holding the, to uh, the, the tokens. So for example, I, by holding uh, the NFT token and uh, having the world, I can develop my own features. And actually what I'm doing is uh, I'm creating my own layer two uh, solution where uh, uh, those are other worlds that people can build in and use my features that I provide in my and system and I will uh, mint them as, as NFTs as well and you will be able to uh, buy parcels and world inside my world. So, so this, is, this actually creates like so sort of this like distributed branch out of Somnium and then there are other people but, doing But this. do you know what's better than DAO? Responsibility. Because if I decentralize economy as Somnium space, People own things as blockchain tokens. The moment Yarda doesn't like what Somnium is doing, he can sell all of them on any other marketplace and go away. You cannot do that in any other game, in any other platform. When you have a decentralized economy, users vote with their money and their presence. And why are you, let's say, why are many people on some centralized platform, why are you stuck to one game for 10 years? Maybe because it's good. I hope it's because of that. But m most of the time, it's people saying, I've put so much time already into this. I already, you know, I'm stuck to this platform because it's just so much effort came from my life to this platform. I have to be here. That's a wrong approach. The good approach is that you say, 
there is something better out there and I want to sell it here and go there or I want to take these things and move there. And that's the best exam for Somnium space because if people don't like what we're doing, they say goodbye. And they don't lose anything, they don't lose time, they don't lose money, they just go away. I think that should be the ultimate test for every platform. Not centralizing and closing you down, but opening it up and saying, hey, you're free to go anywhere you want, but if you like it here, stay with us. That's what we believe in. And this actually goes even farther. So, for example, the game, we plan to uh, mint uh, achievements, levels, and uh, uh, basically where you get in the game uh, as uh, NFT tokens. And then those NFT tokens are readable from, you, uh, from your wallet. So other people can create other games uh, that will uh, maybe, like, I will make bad decisions, then the game will suck in the future. Uh, but uh, still people like it. So someone can create a different version of the game that's uh, how uh, the people actually like it. And they can use those achievements and the progress uh, that they can just read in the blockchain. And uh, those people will not lose the progress, even if it's like, I can't do anything about that. It's, it's just about the openness. It actually creates the responsibility, forces the responsibility. OK. I think. If there is no more questions, you can find us later here. I have a fireside chat with Yulia, I think at 3 something. So you will be able to find us and discuss Metaverse. Um, I guess thank you very much. Thank you, Yarda, for being with me. And thank you for being with us. Thank you, everybody. See you.